The key technical problem associated with building technology to detect CTAM is that often it feels as though the size of the problem is outpacing the solutions that we're building. When CSAM content is shared, it spreads easily and quickly, but detecting it requires a methodical, thoughtful process, especially at large scale. And the main tool at our disposal is hashing and matching, which requires us to know about the image and be matching against it. The CSAM classifiers that we're building are going to give the child safety ecosystem a better chance at keeping up for at least two reasons. First and foremost, it's going to allow us to detect new content. Um, and that means we find kids faster because we don't have to wait as long for the image to make its way onto the hash lists. Of course, that by itself is huge, but the classifier also speeds up the process of finding known content. Because even if the image gets missed by hashing and matching, the classifier still has a chance to detect it. Thorne has wanted to build these classifiers for years. Long before I joined, I, I joke that uh, I've been at Thorne for over a year and a half now and I still haven't had an original idea. Uh, but for me, the potential impact of this work became real when I stopped thinking about the classifiers in terms of accuracy and precision and recall and started to think about it in terms of victims found and survivors served. I've known for a long time that I wanted to devote my life to serving children. As, as a kid, I was surrounded by adults who made sure that I lived in a world where I could be curious and safe and where it was, at, I don't know if I ever really had to worry about what the outside world looked like and, and what the harms were that were out there. And I want that for every kid. And that's what's been really powerful to watch is to see so many uh, grown-ups who have devoted so much of their lives to this mission uh, because it wouldn't be possible without them.